Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS, and we're going to be discussing model calibration in this lesson. So what I have on the screen here is the web page of the HECRAS user's manual at the time of this recording. It is version 6.7 beta, but that might change a little bit as uh, new models come out. I also have a HECRAS model up here and it's ready for a demonstration, but I'm first going to talk about the user's manual because it talks about uh, some background on model calibration first. Okay, back to the user's manual. Calibration is the adjustment of model parameters so that the model results reproduce observed data at an acceptable accuracy. Some of those model parameters would be Manning's roughness value or hydraulic structure coefficients. Further down, we have some information about stage records and flow records. When doing calibration, we typically have a target location. That's the observed data. And it's typically either observed stage records like historical data or um, observed flow records. More often than not, it's going to be stage records, but those stage records could be off by plus or minus one foot. Or in the case of flow records, it could be off by plus or minus a 5%. But flow records are oftentimes based on the stage, based using a rating curve. So that's why using observed stage records, historical data, is more common. This page also lists out some reasons why there could be inaccuracies, such as systematic accumulated air over time, the float gets stuck for uh, stage recording and so on, vertical datum air subsidence and so on. Also further down, it talks about high watermarks right here. So for instance, you could have a um, watermark on a tree or a building or a structure or something and that could represent a stage however it may also not be accurate for various reasons for instance if it's a high flow rate then the mark on a pier for instance could more accurately convey the energy grade line not the water surface elevation or a tree that's porous could uh, suffer some capillary effects for instance and that could result in a higher observed stage than reality all right, further down, we have some unengaged drainage areas as well. It's just another factor that could influence the observed data. Further down, it shows, it mentions a few other potential sources of air in observed data, such as river and floodplain geometry. For instance, your cross-section data just may not be accurate. You may not have enough cross-section data. Here, it also mentions 1D model assumes a constant one-to-one uh, -one relationship in the rating curve. That may not be true because uh, further down we have um, looped rating curves as a factor. The roughness coefficient itself is not always constant. For instance, we have a diagram here on the screen that shows that as the flow rate increases or the, the depth of the water increases, then you're going to have le lower Manning's end roughness values. So the flow rate, I believe, discharge, yeah, that's on the horizontal axis. So as that number increases, you see that the roughness value if you can read that, decreases. For looped rating curves, here's another plot here. This is what I was talking about. You're actually going to have a looping system because the rating curve isn't exclusively based on the channel geometry and the flow rate. It is also based on the derivative of the flow rate, i.e. the change in flow rate. So the rising limb of the hydrograph will probably result in a lower stage. And then as the receding limb occurs, that same flow rate could exhibit two different stages based on whether the water, the flow rate's increasing or is decreasing. Alluvial rivers is another topic it comes up with in the user's manual. It basically talks about how the invert of the Mississippi River here in this diagram at times increases and then decreases again. Generally speaking, it is decreasing, but based on alluvium, that is moved around in the river channel. The channel changes shape. So for instance, at the turns, it's called the pool. And then in the straightaway, it's called the crossing. So downstream of the pool, you could have a crossing that actually has a higher invert of the pool. All right, let's uh, keep moving here. Offline storage is another factor. This will be the last one, then we'll get to the demo. Where, for instance, if you have offline storage with a particular invert, then uh, say the invert's at 14,000 CFS, whatever stage that is, then you may actually see uh, a difference between the flow rate upstream of the invert and downstream of the invert of that lateral structure that's diverting water out of the river channel. So that difference in flow rate right here would represent the flow rate that's being diverted out of the channel into a lateral structure. 
Also hydraulic structure coefficients. These are some other values or parameters that the modeler would use to uh, change, to calibrate, not just the Manning's and roughness value. All right, some of the tools in HECRAS to support model calibration. We'll be going over this in the demo. And then here we go. Towards the end of the, the page here is where we actually use some of the steps for model calibration. What I have here is my HECRAS. It's a single river reach from river station 10,000 down to zero. So about almost two miles of reach of cross-section data sketched in right here. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a geometry file that I want to start with, which is 0 0.05 for Manning's N. So these two cross sections here, you can see both use 0 0.05 for the Manning's roughness coefficient. And I'll click OK. I've got a few other geometry files here that use different values like 0 0.02, 0 0.035, and so on. Also in my model, I've got flow data. So this is an unsteady flow. And then uh, what I have for a boundary condition is a normal depth at the downstream end, and then a flow hydrograph at the upstream end. If I click on the flow hydrograph and then click on the plot data, you can see what that flow is. It starts at about 20,000 CFS and then ramps up to almost 600,000 CFS and then ramps back down to its base flow of 20,000 CFS. This all occurs over the duration of a three-day simulation. So with hourly flow rate, that's going to be 72 hours. Also, while I'm here, I want to go ahead and point out the observed data. So there's observed data tab right here. And this is crucial for model calibration. You need to have some sort of target that you're aiming for. And that's where the observed data comes in. What I did is I, first of all, I selected a river reach 10,000 here, this cross section by selecting the river reach. I've already added it, but you basically select it, click add, and then that would add to the table. I don't want to do that a second time though. Then because I have observed stage data right here, there's also observed flow, observed rating curve, and so on. But observed stage will probably be the most common one used. Go ahead and click edit, and then you can edit what that observed stage is at the cross section you selected, 10,000 in this case. You can also input that data via uh, DSS or if it's a constant value for the steady flow. So I went with the table. This is going to be unsteady flow. And now let's go ahead and run the simulation. So I'm going to click on the running stick figure for unsteady flow analysis. I can also go up to the run menu, unsteady flow analysis. And then here I have my simulation time window. It's 72 hours. So you see three days from Jan 1 to Jan 4. I'm using that 0.05 geometry file, and then my hydrograph will always be the same. Hold on, I need to uh, load the correct plan here. So open plan. Okay, this is the correct plan. I'll click compute. All right, that data ran. So let's go ahead and close it and take a look at some results. View, cross section. I'm going to go ahead and just animate this real quick. So first the flow start starts low, it goes up. There's the peak of the hydrograph, and now it's receding. All right, very cool. Let's go ahead and look at the um, stage and flow hydrographs. This is really the result we're going to be looking at most for calibration, at least in this model for this video. So let me go ahead and resize this real quick. What you're seeing here is a stage and flow hydrograph. I'm not so interested in the flow, so I'm going to toggle that off over here on the right. Now what we have is the stage, which I've highlighted in magenta. This is the stage of the uh, cross section right here at the top of the river reach river station 10,000 and you can see that it's actually above the observed stage which is the black series of data it looks like it's above by about 3.6 feet so that's quite a bit so what i'm going to do in my next iteration is in the calibration process is to decrease the manning's end value for the main channel and the left and right overbanks this right here, what we're looking at is 0 0.05 for a Manning's N, but I'm going to change that to 0 0.02. So what I did is I created a new geometry file, changed it so 0 0.02 is used. Let's go ahead and run that by opening up that file. Open plan, 0 0.02 is right here, open, and then compute. Okay, that completed. I'll click close. Let's go back to the results view. I'm going to cross section pretty much look the same stage and flow hydrographs. And now I'm going to again toggle off the flow data and then highlight the stage. This time the stage is much lower. Like it looks like it's 10 feet lower. So yeah, nine, nine or 10 feet lower here. 
which means the N Manning's N value is way too slow, small. We know that the target Manning's N value is going to be best somewhere between our first iteration of 0 0.05 and then our second trial of 0 0.02. So what I did, we'll split the difference, is run 0 0.035. We'll go back to open that particular plan right here, and then OK, and then Compute. So I'm going to click Close. Again, I'll go up to View, and then Stage and Flow Hydrographs. I'm going to toggle off the flow once again. This looks a lot closer. So let me click on stage. The purple or magenta line here is the results from our model using Manning's end value of 0 0.035. And just glancing at the numbers here on the screen, it looks like it's off about one or two feet. Yeah, so it's off two feet right there. So what that tells me is we need to increase the Manning's end just a little bit more. Now, I'll tell you right now, the Manning's end that I used for this observed stage data is 0 0.04. So it is indeed between 0 0.05 and 0 0.035. But what I want to do is bring up all the plots together. So I'm going to go options and then plans. And then let's just toggle on the three different trials that we did. And then I'm going to turn off the flow variable. So options, variables, I'm going to toggle off flow, click OK. I'm going to resize this here. And then I'm going to actually right click and then change the lines and symbols. So this first one here, I'm going to say no symbol, blue is fine. We'll just make it thicker, so maybe four. And then water surface two, no symbol needed. Let's go ahead and make that orange, okay, and then make it thicker, okay. And then uh, the third one here, no symbol needed. We'll change the color to green, okay. And then we'll make the thickness uh, five again, okay. So in summary, what, what we did here for model calibration is the orange line here is 0 0.05. And then we changed the Manning's end down to 0 0.02. That resulted in the green line. And then finally, 0 0.035 is the blue line. And the target we were aiming for is the black line. This stage, observed stage, is it's the same observed stage for all three values. But the Manning's end I used to generate it was 0 0.04. All right, well, that is it for the demonstration. There's still a few more things I wanted to mention. For instance, if I was going to do some more fine tuning calibration for this model, I could go ahead and change the Manning's end so it's different for the main channel as it is for the overbank area, which is very common. Typically, the main channel has a lower Manning's end value and the overbank has a rougher, higher Manning's end value. To do that, we could just do it from the cross section editor or we could go into the tables, Manning's end value, and then just go ahead and change the values like this. Change it and then click OK. This table is particularly helpful if you have a number of different river stations, which you'd have to um, select based on the reach. Something else you can do is change the Manning's end value based on the flow rate or the depth or the season, for instance. So to do that from the geometry data editor, you go to tools, flow roughness factor, and then based on, you'd select the river station here, and then basically whatever the flow rate is, this roughness factor would be multiplied by the Manning's end value. So if Manning's end value was 0 0.035 and your roughness factor was 1.1, then you it would just multiply that by 1.1 and it'd be 0 0.0385, right? So that would be the, the new Manning's roughness based on the flow. Okay, another way to um, modify the Manning's end value with the multiply factors to go to tools, seasonal roughness factor, because the water is typically colder in the winter time, which means you're going to have a higher viscosity, and that's going to lead to more erosion and more alluvium and erosion in the water would lead to higher Manning's end values. So you can go ahead and tweak the roughness factor based on the time of year that way. Those two flow factor modifications are also available in the plan. So if I click on plan options, we have the same flow roughness factor here. Let me cancel that as well as seasonal roughness factor here. So just be wary. You don't want to be uh, multiplying the Manning's end value by the same factor multiple times unknowingly. The last thing the user manual says in this section is to verify your model calibration using other data, using different flow data from different water events that was not used in the calibration process, which is basically model building 101. The user's manual also mentions there's some general trends when adjusting the parameters. 
For instance, we have a we modified Manning's n value for this example. When you increase Manning's n value, what you're going to see is uh, stages will increase, the peak discharge will decrease, the tra travel time will increase, and the loop effect within that rating curve will also increase. Here's that looping effect once again. So rising limb and receding limb. Impacts of increasing storage. So if you have more off-stream storage, which I did not demonstrate in this video, but you can also expect similar results as increasing the Manning's end, which are peak discharge will decrease, travel time will increase, and also the tail end or the receding limb of the hydrograph will be extended further in time. A few final suggestions and warnings regarding your calibration. Uh, first of all, don't make unrealistic values for some parameter. You may need to just change a different parameter value. I mentioned this earlier, but typically you're going to calibrate using stage data, not flow data. Number three here is to be wary of the one-to-one -one rating curves that don't take into account the change in flow rate. Four is that DEM data, like 10 meter DEM data, may not be accurate enough to accurately depict the cross section geometry. Number five is a, a good one. The volume of off channel storage is often underestimated. So, for instance, you may need to increase the off channel storage when running your model. And then, sort of a side note to that is if you're using older studies that only used steady state flow, they may not have included sto um, off channel storage at all. Calibration data and uh, validation data should use off, obviously a different data sets, but should also include a wide range of different flows. So you should have low flow events and high flow events. And then finally, at the very end, if your event you're using has a levy breach or overtopping or some sort of unique event, that should also be considered in the model calibration process. All right, well, that was it for this exercise in model calibration where we talked about some of the parameter values, the objectives, and then ran through an example using the, a simple river reach in HECRAS.